This week, winter came early with snow blanketing the metro area on Monday and flurries continued the rest of the week. In Brooklyn Park, residents we spoke with didn't seem to mind the first shovelable snowfall. It's perfect. Like I said, it's, it's, it's winter. That's what you expect. You live in Minnesota. Could be worse. And in the realm of kids fun, Stuff's light and fluffy, but they'll try to make a snowman out of it. It's not packing well, though. Snowplow operators in Plymouth got started early this week, and Plymouth Public Works officials say their priority is safety and getting ahead of the commute. We do the bridge decks first where it could be slick, um, and we also do areas where it's um, large hills that may be critical, like around schools and um, areas where there's going to be a lot of traffic. Browen says a common accident for snow plows involves buried fire hydrants. They ask you to join the adopt a hydrant program and clear snow away from any hydrant. It's also worthwhile to point out the obvious that shoveling out a hydrant means fire crews can access the hydrant much faster if they need to. Crews also keep a close eye on the amount of salt and chemicals they spread. It is definitely a balancing act and we are uh, making sure that we are taking into consideration water quality. Um, we have a lot of stormwater ponds and water bodies that um, in the spring when runoff happens, it would the salt that we would put down could end up making its way into those, so we're trying to limit the amount of salt. Browen says all of the Plymouth trucks have GPS to track the amount of salt and chemicals they spread out. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has tips to minimize salt use. They include shoveling during the storm. The more snow you remove manually, the less salt you will have to use and the more effective it will be. 15 degrees and below is too cold for salt. You can use sand for traction, but remember it doesn't melt ice. Applying more salt does not mean snow will melt any faster either. Sweep up any extra salt or sand so it doesn't wash away. And finally, there's more to learn. Check out the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency's website to learn more. In the restaurant industry, you always want to serve good food, but it also helps if you have top-notch customer service. Delane Cleveland introduces us to Papa's Cafe, a small diner in New Hope with a big heart. Good morning. Hi. How are we doing today? Breakfast is considered by many as the most important meal of the day. And for more than 20 years, Doug Starica has been serving up large portions of delicious food to a loyal base of customers. I have people I see twice a day sometimes, every day. And it's like, how do you not love that? <laughs> Doug is the longtime owner of Papa's Cafe. It's a small restaurant in New Hope, mainly specializing in breakfast food that's been in the family since 1994. My parents bought this, said, hey, you want to cook? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I mean, I bartended and bus tables and stuff when I was younger, so I'm like, yeah, I think I can give it a shot. And here I am, 20-something years later. When you run a restaurant for that long... How would you like your eggs done? It's easy to develop relationships with the regulars. It feels like cheers. Folks like Charlie Melsha, yeah. who come in week after week to enjoy a meal served by a group of friendly and familiar faces. It's down to earth, you know. There's, uh, we love the waitresses. We've got Aaron, Laura, and Becky. The service, I come in every Thursday night, and they're, one of them is here. Yet the service only tells part of the story. Do you want water as well? This New Hope Diner is a go-to spot because customers can enjoy a tasty meal for a good price. Sounds good. I'll see you in a little bit. It also doesn't hurt that they make the claim of having the best pancakes around. <laughs> Lots of sugar. <laughs> Buttermilk, sugar, just really. It's just the high sugar content and knowing how to cook them. Good food, an old school feel, and a family-like atmosphere that customers say you won't find at a chain. This beats chain restaurants all the heck, and uh, they need more of them. There is a student out at Cooper High School who is well known, not just in the school's music program, but all around the state. <laughs> Arlo Hollander is the music equivalent of a five-star athlete. You work on that hard, you know. I spend two to three hours a day probably practicing, working on trombone. He's one of the top youth trombonists in the state, playing in the Greater Twin Cities Youth Symphony Orchestra and in Minnesota Youth Jazz Band's top jazz band. And here at Cooper High School... He is involved in 
darn near every musical opportunity we offer at Cooper. Band director Marcus Hahn says Arlo's talent is sought out. The kid's the real deal. And Arlo is always ready to help, even up for a challenge. One parade, our tuba player couldn't be there. And I was like, Arlo, do you want to play the tuba? And he's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. And he played the tuba. Arlo doesn't just play, he leads. He's the senior drum major of the marching band. Being a drum major, you're having the responsibility of keeping everybody kind of gelled together. Arlo, you know, his dedication and love of music has definitely made him stand out from other students. Being the drum major is a really important position uh, to be and for people like looking up to that. Besides music, Arlo is also well-rounded, a good student and captain of the Nordic ski team. He aspires someday to play in a professional orchestra. But don't ask Arlo about it. This standout student is humble about his gifts. While being just a phenomenal musician, he's remained approachable to other students and has definitely put himself out there to help other students get better. And that has helped make him a leader in the band just because they respect his ability and his kindness. and. Um, he's just a terrific young man. The weather might have gotten cooler, but that doesn't mean you have to cross off going to the farmer's market. Our indoor market has been here since 2006. Um, it's a great opportunity for our vendors who rely on farmer's markets as a main source of income. Mark your calendars for when the market is open next. That's November 22nd, when they will also have turkeys, baked goods, and more items to get ready for your Thanksgiving feast. Three boys soccer teams from our area played in state tournaments this fall, highlighted by Wyzetta winning the Class 3A title. CCX Sports is once again naming an all-area team to recognize the top players in the northwest suburbs. Here's Jay Wilcox. We'll start our CCX all-area boys soccer team with a great group of forwards and midfielders. Number 10, Joe Highfield, helped Wyzetta to the state 3A championship, netting the winning goal in overtime in the final. The All-State pick and Mr. Soccer finalist is a highly skilled game changer and had 19 goals and 6 assists. Highfield will play for Portland. Another number 10, Chris Franz of Maple Grove is another Mr. Soccer finalist in Class 3A. A great finisher and distributor, Franz had 29 goals and 20 assists and was a first-team All-Metro and All-State pick and Crimson team MVP. Number 21, Sylvester Doe of Champlain Park gave opposing defenses fits. The first team All-State pick and team MVP had 31 goals and 10 assists, combining speed and skill for the Rebels. Doe had 53 career goals. Number 7, Drew Pitzner of Heritage Christian Academy won the Mr. Soccer Award for Class A. Big, strong, and fast, Pitzner had 31 goals and 8 assists and was a two-time All-State pick. Number 17, Mike Orloff had a great senior season for YZ. The All-State and second-team All-Metro pick led the Trojans with 22 goals and 11 assists and possesses a great shot. He was the emotional leader of the Trojans. Number 9, Carter Sheard of Maple Grove combined with Franz to provide a potent duo up front for the Crimson. Speedy All-State pick Sheard had 17 goals and 7 assists to wrap up a four-year career. Number 23, Ryan Hutt of Providence Academy broke the school single season record with 16 goals for a Lions program that is on the rise. Strong and fast, Hutt moved to forward this season. Number 12, Aaron Badillo of Maple Grove earned All-State honors and All-Tournament honors in the state tournament. Creative with the ball and a strong shooter, Badillo had nine goals and 11 assists. He'll take the shot and he scores! Oh, beautiful shot. Our defenders are led by number five, Joey Varica of Wyzetta. A great communicator and tactical player, Varica earned second team All-State honors and first team All-Metro honors. He chipped in with four goals and an assist, including the game-tying goal late in regulation in the state title game. Number 21, Elijah Duke of Armstrong led his team to a breakout season, helping the team to eight shutouts. The Falcons Defender of the Year, Duke was ranked as the number four player in the Northwest Suburban Conference. He chipped in on offense with three goals and an assist. Osseo's number 18, Ahmed Kadar, earned second team All-Metro honors for an Orioles team that handed Maple Grove its only regular season loss and had its best season in the past decade. 
The Orioles Defensive Player of the Year, Kadar was one of the Northwest Suburban's best shutdown center backs. Champlin Park's number two, Drew Kala, keyed the defense for a very good Rebel squad. A vocal leader and great 1v1 player, Kala has a nonstop motor for a team that had seven shutouts. He added a goal and six assists. Our goalkeeper is Maple Grove's Holden Waldrum. The senior was 14-1 with 10 shutouts, earning all-state honors. After overcoming an injury, he was voted most determined by his teammates. Waldrum had a 47-3-3 career record in four seasons for the Crimson. What a fantastic group, the CCX All-Area Boys Soccer Team. And these players also had strong seasons. The honorable mention picks for boys soccer. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports.